Hey guys and gals, Malkuth1974 back at you with another tutorial. Today we're going to cover maneuver nodes and how they work and some tips and tricks on what they do. So we're just going to get right into this. I am in an orbit of Kerbin. My vessel is right there. It's called the one-man pod. You can tell your vector line from all the other vector lines by the, fa the fact that it's colored blue. Everybody else's vector lines that I am not controlling of their vessels is white and any future line that we'll get into a little bit later is usually yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to left click on my blue line and it's going to pop up this little pop up. Now the pop up says add maneuver and warp here. What we're concerned with right now is the add maneuver button so I'm going to click on that. So there we go. So what this means is that we see these little uh, circles and uh, triangles and other circles. These are all different maneuver nodes that can execute different types of maneuvers for you in your game. Now the one you might be used to is what is called the prograde and the retrograde maneuver node and that is the little green one right here. This is the prograde node and the other one right here which has a little X inside it. It's hard to see right now but that is the retrograde node and these are what you use to increase your orbital altitude or decrease them. And to do that, all you have to do is left click on the actual node and kind of slide it a little bit away from the actual nodes. And you'll find that the, uh, the smaller the adjustment, the slower, the slower the actual adjustment to your altitude. The more you do, the higher it will go. Now, to undo what we just do, we can go to the retrograde and bring it back down or you can actually tuck it in closer to the node and it will automatically bring it down and add some retrograde to it for you a little bit slower than if you were to go this way but it's kind of a fine adjustment that you can do in case you go a little bit above or below what you actually need to do so what I'm going to do now is I am going to show you a little bit of how to execute one of these burns on the node. So something that this all adds, if we take a look down here, once we add a node to our line, our little blue line, it's going to add these a few little boxes, a thing called the estimated burn and a node in T minus whatever the seconds are in this case, four minutes and zero seconds, or now it's three minutes. So what this line right here means is that this is how much delta V is going to cost us. In this case, it's giving us in a, a seconds of uh, how much speed we have to reduce. Which think of that as delta V. So in this case, it's 0.1 ms. We'll change that in a second. And then it, under it, it's the estimated burn. So I'm going to add a little bit to this. And you can see my estimated burn is going up to 15 seconds. I'm going to lower it. I don't have a whole lot of fuel in this vessel, so I'm not going to do too much. So there we go. And it says node in T minus 4 minutes, 8 seconds. So when you execute a burn in a uh, Kerbal Space Program, how it works is that it's actually thinking that this is going to actually be instantly done and everything's going to be fine and dandy. Unfortunately, that's not true because we every engine's different and there's no way we can instantly burn off 110.5 ms or delta v in uh, instantly so the estimated burn is telling us it could take nine seconds the way the maneuver nodes thinking right now is it wants us to actually start a neat, uh, node in t minus zero so if we started at t minus zero that means that we wouldn't actually finish this burn into minus 0 0.9 so the maneuver node would be off by quite a bit we we uh, it wouldn't be as precise as that so a way to adjust for that is to take your estimated burn in this case nine seconds and divide it by two now nine doesn't really go into two very well so what we'll do is we'll actually es do the actual burn and in five seconds so I always I always go up some people always go down but I just give it a little bit extra so at five seconds we will execute the burn and what will happen is that for five seconds on this side we will be executing a burn of this node and then for five seconds on this side we'll be ex executing the rest of the burn so we'll be on both sides of the node when this happens both sides means the retrograde side and the prograde side in, in the case of how we're doing this node 
Another thing that we need to look at is that on our nav ball, it's going to show it shows us the target that we need to be actually pointing our vector at for we burn in the correct direction for, for this particular maneuver node. In this case we have a little arrow that's pointing us to where that target is. It's the same color, it's blue. You can see it right here. So I'm going to put my target reticle right on top of that. And you can see it's actually heading for the prograde marker which in all makes sense because we are doing a prograde burn to increase our apoapsis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait and we'll do some time acceleration. And we're going to wait to five seconds. We're going to cut this down just like that. And at five seconds, we're going to execute the burn. And we're going to wait till this hits zero. Once it gets a little bit low, I'm going to lower my speed a little bit. And there we go. So you can see that our target actually went off a little bit. You can chase it if you want. But in this case, you can see how we are off by just a little bit and that is even though we did the divide by two it's never ever going to be perfect because unless you do it very quickly and you follow that around and it's it's all complicated you'll get used to it as time goes on but that is how you actually execute the actual maneuver so i just got rid of the maneuver node and we'll add some more we'll go we'll cover some of what the other ones mean so I'm going to add another maneuver node. So we just messed around with the prograde and the retrograde to actually change our orbital uh, velocity, or actually in this case, our orbital height from uh, what it is now to higher. So what are these other, you got some blue ones and these purplish, pinkish ones. What do these mean? So let's cover the blue ones first. Now the blue ones actually stand for radial and anti-radial. Now the the circle right here with the hash marks inside of them, that is known as the radial. And the other circle with the hash marks outside of them with a little dot into, in it is known as the anti-radial. Now what these do, if we can actually look at our uh, velocity markers here, in this case it's now kind of the bluish color and yellowish color, little dots on it, we can kind of tell what it is. What this will do is that this will adjust our orbit from the center of mass of your actual maneuver node, or in this case, what your vessel will be. What I mean by that is if I add some anti-radial to it, watch what happens to the yellow line. You can see that from the center of this line, it's rotating the right of our maneuver node. If we go the opposite way, it will actually add it the other way, this way. So all that is doing is basically swinging our orbital velocity one way or the other. And you can tell it's quite expensive. Maneuver nodes in space are usually expensive unless you know a few tricks to not do that. So there we go. That is what the anti and uh, radial and the radial does for you. The other maneuver node option is what's called the normal and the anti-normal. Now what these will adjust is that this will adjust your inclination. Inclination means simply, if you go like this, there's my inclination. Now if I was to execute this maneuver node, I would be on an inclination. This is an inclination of Kerbin. Right now we're on just a regular horizontal 90 degree uh, vector, what most people launch when they actually launch to Kerbin. This one will put us on a actual inclination of whatever measurement this is. We can't actually tell right now, but that's okay. So delete that. So what I had actually set up to demonstrate what that means is I have another vessel set up right here. Now when you want to match the inclination of another vessel, in case in uh, this case we're going to do the one-man pod, what I'm going to do is what you want to look for when that happens is you want to look for when your vector line actually meets up with his vector line. This is what's known as the DN and the AN, and I'll show you that a little bit more right here. So, so we can tell 
if we actually target him, actually, this is the easiest way to do it. Left, uh, right, left click on him and go uh, set as target. We can see that we get all these nice little lines on here. The important lines that we want to look at is called the AN, which is the ascending node. And on this side will be the DN, the descending node. Again, this is where my line meets up with his line. This is the only time in the whole orbit, that actually twice in the orbit, that it actually meets up. So if you do an inclination change, when this happens, it'll be the easiest way to actually match what his inclination is. So if I put the maneuver node on here, I go add maneuver, and again, I go to the anti-normal and the normal. In this case, we are going to go down. So you can tell I am rotating, actually, with him. So you can also look, you can see that I'm actually adding a little bit of apoapis to this. That is adjustments you have to make to make this actually work a little bit better. And we'll just keep kind of going. And I'll keep doing some uh, retrograde adjustments. And there we go. Can add a little bit more to it. I'm not quite there yet. If you look at your lines, it's actually giving you the hint of where you are. So on this one, our ascending node is 1.0. If you keep adjusting that, you can actually get that to zero. That means it'll be an exact match of what he is. That's 0 0.6. It's kind of going around. We'll wait till it swings around. Yeah, we're pretty close there. Of course, I probably added a little bit. Yeah. That's good. So basically we are now in the same inclination. All I've done, I actually haven't done any of these changes. If we actually look at how much it will cost us in delta V, inclination changes while in orbit are pretty expensive, so uh, keep that in mind. So there you go. That is what the normal and the anti-normal does. Now that we understand what all of the markers do, let's show you something that you might have noticed while we did this video. Now if we look at all of our markers, our anti-radial, uh, our normal, and our, retro our prograde and retrograde, you can see that they are color-coded. Now if you look on your nav ball, you will also see that those same marks are actually represented on the nav ball. In this case, we have the normal, and the exact opposite of it is the anti-normal. And if we look up here to the north and the south, we should have the radial and the anti-radial. In this case, this is the anti-radial, and this is the radial. And of course, we're all used to the retrograde marker and the prograde marker. So that is something that you guys should be aware of. You can make adjustments in the nav ball itself without actually doing a maneuver node. Once you learn what the maneuvers do, we know that if we go normal, we're going to change our inclination. And if we go anti-normal, we'll change the inclination in the other way. If we go to radial, which is always up, we're going to change, we're going to rotate our orbit left or right. So there you go. That is all you need to know about that. They are represented and that's how that works. So a couple other things you can do with the maneuver nodes real quick before we end, uh, exit this. I added another one. If you uh, left click on the maneuver node and hold down the left mouse button, you can move it around on pretty much anywhere around here, which is pretty neat. If you right click on it, it will pop in, pop up into what we see here, and the little X here just deletes it, which is what I just did. So I'll add it again, add a maneuver node, right click again. It will also add what these two little buttons right here. What these do is that these will add an extra orbit before you execute the actual node. So in this case, in four minutes, and uh, I just messed it up, in four minutes, 19 seconds, we'll reach this, and if this node was active, we would have to actually execute the burn to do it. But if I click on this, it added another orbit before we actually execute it. So in this case, I would go buy it, and when I came back around, it would actually, the timer would go down to zero, and then we could execute the node like we usually do, divide by two, whatever the number is, and that's what we would have. And 
now that I you can add as much as you want see how I'm kind of adding and they just keep adding more time to it that's how many times you know it's the countdown so you just got to pay for attention to that now the other one the opposite one just takes it away and we can get it right back down to where we were and that's all good to click in between the two different modes the actual maneuver node and the uh, if you want to delete it or add the orbit you just have to right click on it and keep right clicking on it and it'll change in between it so there you go and that about covers how the maneuver work nodes work in Kerbal Space Program so I hope this guy this helps you out guys and as always thanks for watching and we'll see you later this is Malkuth 1974 out of here